<coughs> Hi. Right, I've, 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 this is my fourth attempt at this video. I'm, I'm no um, IT person. I, I don't know how to cut the videos. I don't know how to bleep certain things out. And um, I've just messed up. So I'm starting again. So bear with me. I decided to start a blog. Um, and I'm bloody nervous about it. Um, and I feel like I want to speak about this, but I feel like it's not really fair with the line of industry I'm in because anything that I do right, the press like to put it everywhere and I can't just do it for doing it's sake. Like then it's like, oh, exclusive, or, oh, this, that. You know, like, it's really annoying when actually I just like to reach out to people, like-minded people who could give me a bit of advice and help me. Um, because I'm only human and I have things that I need help with too. Um, so I've been diagnosed um, with a few mental health issues um, and I'm not ready to talk about all of them yet. Um, I don't know if I ever will be. This is a lot for me doing this. Um, I can't make decisions for myself, so I text my mum and asked if we should have done it or not. She said to sleep on it. Um, my mum's there in the background, I don't know if you can see him. Um, she told me to sleep on it. I feel like I've thought about it for a while and I feel like it really helps me. Um, when I've been at my lowest points in life, I've always spoke to my phone and the camera because it, it's made me feel like less... Um, lonely, it actually helps me. So I thought, well, why don't I do it? And because I do it to like see me progress, but I don't. I want to do this anyway to like just ask for help and advice. Um. Now, when I first got told about this, I was like, that's not me. Um, along with a few other things. Um, but actually, this is me, and um. It makes so much sense to me now. Um, so I have, um, <laughs> getting all nervous, I have high functioning autism. Um, now, when I see my um, guy who, who who helped me and helped me with my, told me, you know, like the things that I have, um, this was one of them, but all the others as well, is like me down to a T. It's crazy. Um, but yeah, I guess I just went under the radar with this, um, but it explained a lot to me. Now, I was watching videos by Kate Emily Brinley, who was really good, about high function autism. Ended up getting a bit compulsive with it and writing hundreds and hundreds of notes about it, pages and pages, um, because I'm interested in it. Um, and... I think since I'm knowing I'm more aware of what I'm doing, but I've, I've struggled my whole life with it. It's actually quite sad. And I was, my mum felt a bit gutted for me because she was like, I knew that you struggled with these things, but she was like, I didn't even think. And then I think she felt upset for like being a, like the way my little head must have been struggling for so many years. Um, So I ended up listening to Kate Emily Brinley's video. I'm just gonna check this is still recording. Because, yeah, right, it's um, So I watched Kate Emily bring these videos and she was talking about autism and the spectrum and um, how I think everyone with autism is different um, and how women are different to men because we pick up on traits and copy and it's like a survival thing, I think. Anyway, I, I can only tell you for me. I'm not a doctor. I don't know all the facts, I, you know. I am learning about myself and I'm doing this to help others, but also so I can get help and tips with people who've got it. I'd really love some um, help with certain things. Now, I don't want to bore you all and, and read out the absolute essays and pages I've wrote. So maybe I should just go through the ones that stand out to me. Should I do that? Got no one to tell me yes or no. Okay, we'll do that. Right. So <clears throat> the first one that sticks out to me was miss a lot of days due to social exhaustion. Um that is me. Um so 
as well with 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 going to um social places i find I'm, I'm really bad with my anxiety and me and my mum were talking about this like when i was like I, I found school really hard getting on the school bus overwhelming um i'm better on one-to-ones um never really fitted in just felt like i'd be like a marsh and like some i've just never ever felt it like i fitted in ever in my life um felt like i'm just not made to be here like being like i'm an alien or a martian or something um but yeah social exhaustion um and the social situations so like my mum was saying now how obvious it is but how i wasn't aware of it um to think it was that basically but like when i used to go out in manchester when i was younger the thought of going to a bar or somewhere where I've never been before was absolutely horrific. Uh, oh my God. Um, I'd have to drink a bottle of wine before I went out. And I do believe I've self-medicated as well now a lot. Because um, the anxiety and like, I'd sweat. I'd sweat. I'd be like feeling sick. And I'd have a tantrum. And my mum would be like, it'd be like a three-year-old tantrum. I'd literally be like, I can't do it. Throw myself on the bed, cry my eyes out. And then eventually try and get myself ready. And then drink a bottle of wine on the way to calm my nerves. And then it still wouldn't really do much because it was that bad um, walking into the place. And then one of my friends used to call me Burns. And I'd have to look and be like, right, the toilet's there, smoking shelter's there, four lads there, three girls there, two there, four there, what are da, 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 da. Like, do, 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 like map it all out, exit, can get out there, right. Then I'd get relaxed a tiny little bit, probably because I've had a bottle of wine. Um, but I still found it horrific. I just thought, why can't I enjoy this like other people? Like, I don't get it. Um, and I do believe that's why I drank a lot more because I found it really exhausting. But I used to copy my friends to be like, right, well, they, so I've got to be like that. Like, why can't I do it like that? But, um, took it that way, me. Um, why can't I be like them, you know? So I used to like watch them and. They say that about high functioning women, like we, we, we pick up traits and copy people, um, and that would be me. And then always after that, I'd be exhausted the next day or have like an emotional hangover. Um, and I think, yeah, I, I like after a big thing where people would be buzzing on adrenaline, I'd be exhausted and be like, oh, I want to sleep or re like recharge, like need to like recharge myself. It was just all too much. Um, it was funny because I went out for food the other week with one of my mates and we were in a coffee shop and this is another thing my mum and dad said when my dad, when we, like I used to live with my mum and dad and watch a film with dad, I'd do this, like tap his foot constantly and I'd have to rewind the film about top, like literally 10 minutes before and play it from that point and my brothers would go mad and I'd be like, but his tap would be so loud in my ear, like, ugh, I couldn't even cope and I'm, I, I, I find it hard to concentrate anyway, like with the dog moving about because I've got ADHD as well, which I've only just realised, but I think everyone's like, that was obvious. Um, but yeah, so we went to a coffee shop for food and um, my friend's voice was really, really quiet, but I could either shh at the coffee or it was horrendous and someone was putting the knives and forks in the dishwasher and I was literally like, I can't even sit here, but enough to go. Like it was so loud in my head. Um, I always went to the train station with one of my other friends and um, I've always hated, hated busy things, unless I was drinking um, then I could just about get to do it, but uh, hated it, hate party, hated parties, like the initial first going in, not knowing where we were going. Um, oh, just horrible, <laughs> I didn't like think about it, it's horrible. <laughs> so I found it really hard with events and stuff like that. and feel like everyone would be like come on Steph and I'd be like yeah and I, so I'd try my best and not realise and I was like struggling with this and I'd be like and then I'd be pretending I was okay but really I'm having an absolute heart attack inside and that's the way to go until I got my burdens and then I could relax a bit um so yeah also as well people who follow me might have seen that I'll always um go to the same places and I didn't even realise so I always go to Nosey Safari Park. I love it there. <laughs> I think I love it more than Caven. I love animals. Um, I like all the facts about them and everything. And it's something that I, I like to go there. It makes me happy. It's my happy place. 
and um, but my mum was like, you always go to the zoo, why don't you go somewhere different? But I'm like, and I didn't realise, but now I do, it's because I know it. Because I, like, I know where I'm going, I know where everything is, and I know it and it's a safe place for me and I can relax there. Um, now, when I go new places, I, well, I've always done it anyway, I say, oh, let's see it, I need to Google it and like picture it type of thing, it's weird. Um, so yeah, that was like kind of with the out and about things and I'm trying to learn more with that. I'm trying to push myself, going to new places. Um, I find it really hard at first, but like by the third time I've gone, I'm a lot more relaxed. But I suppose it's just learning about yourself, isn't it? Just, my mum felt sad for me. And I feel a bit crap for myself as well because since I was a kid, I've struggled with this. And I didn't get help for it. So my little head's been doing overtime and I was a kid. And now I know why. And I've just struggled and I've literally had to learn off other humans to how to conform and be like a human because I just didn't, I don't get it. Um, I don't have that like sense of identity, but that's with something else as well. Um, so anyway, right. Not being able to cope with long patterns of employment. So I, I, I start things. I want to know everything about it. Right, one of my biggest obsessions when I was a kid was um, one of the wars um, and everything to do with the Holocaust and that. And I used to love doing research and finding everything out about it and going to the museum and blah, blah. And then learn all about it. And then I get bored and I want to do something else. I need to do something else. Blah, 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 blah. Um, and the same with work. I always find that. Like I'll start and stop things and it says people can't cope with it and, and that is very true um but the very hard work and um, get stressed out and become extremely frustrated if I have to do more things than once my mum will say yep to that um I can't do it I've my mum used to say to me we were actually saying this the other day she's going you know I, I, I was saying why can't she do it why can't she plan a trip I can't plan a trip to save my life I'm not going anywhere and I've asked my mum to help me and then I'll be like, wait, what do we do next? And I've got no sense of direction. And I just panic. And I think to get a train there and do like, oh, it's all too much. It's too overwhelming for me. So my mum's basically planned everything for me because I find it hard to. And I've tried taking more responsibility now. I'm 26. But um, I still really struggle with it. Uh, uh, um often got a history of being bullied yeah that was me just felt like i never fitted in um i'm always better on a one-to-one -one as well than group situations i don't really like groups i'm much better one-to-one -one. um <sighs> right so not being able to process things oh so i have just struggled with this so bad and being so frustrated with myself let me just check that still recording i'm going to say this about 10 times during this um <clears throat> What was I saying then? I can't even remember now. Uh, oh yeah, processing things. So I just really like find it so hard. I thought maybe I should put that in with the empathy type thing. Yeah, okay. So um, people say people with aut autism on, I can't even say the word, empathetic, 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 empathetic. Empathetic, empath oh my god, I gotta say it. They lack empathy, can't say the other word. Um, and that's not true. I am like really in tune. So I, I can walk into a room and I can know where he's at, she's at, but I'm like really like almost psychic with how people are feeling. And I can just get people straight away. But when I'm on a one-to-one -one argument with my mum or my brother or someone, which doesn't happen often ever, but if I am, I find it hard. I can't process it. And someone can be crying in front of me and I'll be like, and it's not that like, I don't care. I don't know what it is, you know. I think it's a mixture of a lot of things though. I feel like I'd be a therapist dream <laughs> because I don't know whether it's also because I've had to push my feelings down so much and I've learned through past trauma to not show emotion and then let it erupt. Do you know what I mean? I just like push it down, push it down, push it down. But 
um, I, someone can be crying in front of me and I won't bat an eyelid, won't cry, be like, do the awkward pat on the back. And I, I, I find it really hard to process what they're saying. And that in return, I get angry and it's not with them. I get frustrated with myself because I can't process it quick enough. And then once I've had a few days to process it, I get really frustrated with myself. And I'm like, why couldn't, why can't I do that? This is before I knew that I, would, I had this. I used to get so upset with myself and cry. I'm like, why can't I do that when that's happening? But I just can't. I'd be going for a fag and I'd be straight. Like, I need a fag, panic, can't, because my head. But I understand now that I, I can't process it. And I allow that now. And it just takes me a bit longer. And I've got to accept that, that I can't process it. And especially when people get pissed off or angry and then I'm like, Ugh! and I just fucking combust because I just can't, can't process it. And it's really upsetting and I find that really hard and frustrating. Um, can you see Rumi now? It's fun to sleep on my foot. Uh, Rumi makes me dead calm as well. But I love having him around. He lives with me now um, and he's just dead calm. He just makes me dead calm, it's weird. Even just coming to lie me now, I feel like I've gone. <sighs> I think I was rambling up to that point. Um, so, yeah, you'll have to bear with me because my memory is not the best as well at the moment. Um, I had totally forgotten what I was on about. Uh, he's making that call. <laughs> oh, yeah, processing. So I just find it hard to process things and it's really frustrating and I find it really hard. Maybe it's like people might see it that I don't see it from their perspective. And I try to, but I just find it really hard. But if it wasn't me and it was two other people, I could see that really clearly. Frustrating. So if anyone's got any tips on that, because I don't know what to do, but I'll panic and have a fag. I want to cry, but I can't cry because I don't show emotion. And then when everyone's gone, that's one thing I can't do. Unless I'm really, really bad, like not in a good place. I can cry in front of people. Other than that, I just keep it in and I don't like people seeing me cry. Or being upset, he's really annoying. I'm really worried because he ate me last, last three Jaffa cakes that were on the couch. Came in and he ate them and he got chocolate on and I'm worried. Um, so... Anxiety in my head is going to die now. It's going to be my fault because he had me Jaffa cakes and I didn't put them away. Right, so <laughs> heads are a wonderful thing, aren't they? Um, baby, the black sheep. Seems eccentric. Yeah, I've always been. It's so funny because you know they call we always laugh and call me the black sheep and the black sheep. And um, yeah, um, copy and mimic others to fit in. So it's something else I suffer with. I felt like I've got no sense of identity anyway. But I will mimic others and I'm a bit like a chameleon. So I remember when I was younger, I had a boyfriend. Like when I was a teenager, he wore leather jackets. So I wore leather jackets. And then another one had tattoos. So I got tattoos. And then I felt a bit of a chameleon. And I never really, I've never really been me until obviously now I'm older I am. But um I found that hot, like, when I noticed that when I was growing up. Um, and still now, I'm trying to, like, find what I like. Um, I like to dress for comfort. So when I have to go to events, I've always struggled with that because I'll have, I know I have to put a dress on, but I don't actually feel comfortable in a dress. And I hate every second of it. You know, something tight-fitting. Um, but I think, well, I've got to do that because that's what girls my age are like. So I need to wear this to be like this. When actually... I like wearing comfy clothes, tend to be baggy jammies. I like to wear a baggy t-shirt and knee-high boots. That's my style. Or trackies. Just any and baggy. But like men's. Um, I like to just feel comfy. And like, another thing that I always do, I wear a dressing gown and work all the time. And, and um, I feel like, why are you always wearing a dressing gown? It's a comfort thing for me. I like to hold on to it and feel it. Um, that was obviously a comfort thing. So... Yeah, I've got about 100 dressing gowns, it's not even funny. I wear them all the time. Um, <clears throat> so, the next one, let me just check it's still recording. Yeah, 
the next one um physical communicating their feelings to others i've said that touched on that and i find it hard to say because I, I, I find a hard process i find it hard to, to say how i'm feeling and i might say something that day because i really do want to be okay with that person but but it takes it i'll only start processing it after afterwards it's really it's really mad it takes me a long time to process things it's quite frustrating one second no we don't do that mate. um so um <laughs> this is a big one <laughs> very sensitive might not be able to listen to the news watch the news or listen to the radio uh, or horror films i i don't watch the news it just makes me sad um so i've said about the little noises in the coffee shop and that which i find really a lot um withdrawn isolate um be able become overwhelmed um, I, that's with the processing thing I find it really hard and then I'll get really down and depressed after it and I just want to get in bed and like I don't anymore because I've learned I have to do the opposite so every morning like okay basically this is another thing I have um, a routine um, so I have like a schedule and I have like 7 till 9 um, 9 till 10 uh, 10 till 12, 12 till 1 and so on and I have things planned every day and it's so funny because like I used to <laughs> when they were telling me about it like in work we have a schedule and when the schedule used to change I used to get really like upset by it and um, my dad I, I, I had to end up asking for me to get it visually so I could see it visually this before I knew it and now I'm like oh my god that's me um, so and I'd be like I need to know what's happening because if that changes I'm gonna freak out and I didn't know why and then I get really my mum would be like just get over it blah 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 I'd be like Argh. and now I know with life with everything if I'm like I used to I, I like I, I try not to now because I have my schedule but on oh, my notes on my phone is 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 a is uh, someone I'd love to look and then lists lists like so I'd be like right what are we doing tomorrow now? going there okay and then what are we doing after that even down to so we're gonna have breakfast yeah then we'll get ready right okay then we'll have a game then we'll we'll go in the car we'll go out we'll go there we'll go for a coffee then we'll have a little break then we're we'll gonna then we'll get this then we'll get that and i have to do it but i think that's with the adhd as well the compulsiveness like i want to get everything done in one day i've also got ocd but i think that goes hand in hand like with all of it really um so yeah i'm like you all right mate you okay what's up hey um i'm really worrying about them jaffa cakes it's not fair is it be all right really yeah it's okay sorry um we were thinking though um I forgot what I was up to. Oh, my head. Oh, this is going to be the worst, first vlog ever. Yeah, list. So I like to list everything and get everything done. And I like to know what I'm doing that day. And then, I've, so recently when I got my di like diagnosis, then I started doing that, but I was leaving weekends because I thought, well, each weekend might do something different but I can't now like I know I have to have a plan for everything so like my schedule books up now till <laughs> January knowing what I'm doing so I can relax and I feel like I can relax and if it's not I'm like Rrr! and when I know I've got things to do and I'm not and I'm like oh my god so I have to get it all sorted Um, I'm in a strict routine with my house my house is spotless but I need it to be tidy because it makes me feel better I think that's a lot to do with my OCD though not with being clean because being cl clean is not with those you need like the compulsion to do things like if i start cleaning something i have to do everything and um, and i feel like in my head until the washing's done until everywhere's spotless the floors are brushed everywhere's i always say cozy fresh everything's got to be fresh cozy nice fresh pjs nice bedding blah, 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 blah. then i can relax then 
I know that to accept that that's just what makes me happy. So I spend a few hours a day doing that and every night I can sit down and it's dead cosy, nice and relaxed, candles on, loads of candles, smelling nice and I just like to, my home's my sacred place so I like to really chill out and I love cosy nights and getting snug on the couch is my favourite thing to do. So um, that's my happy place and it's away from all the noise and it's me, Rumi and Caven and it's just so cosy, it's so quiet and I love it. I love my house, I can't believe how happy my home makes me. Um, just making a nice tea every night, having goodies if I'm working hard at the gym, back at it tomorrow. Um, I bet way too many party rings tonight. Um, and just if it, the little things in life make me happy, but I think it's because my life's been so extreme and so for stuff like the way I've not enjoyed it. And actually the little things make me happy. Taking Caden to nursery and getting to pick him up and making a nice tea and having the house nice and tidy and catching up with my friends and laughing and getting cosy and watch films like like that that's just my happy place my heaven like i just love it oh my god how much am i going on about it but i really do love it my home oh my sanctuary <sighs> so let me just check the store recording yep Right, next. Um, time management, I'm really bad with that. Um, planning things, I've said that. Um, I've some more bad ideas. Uh, I've got the appearance. Um, oh, another one, see people. So she said that we see people by um, more for themselves, by age and gender. Um, which is really true. So if I meet someone, like an 80-year-old woman, I don't think, oh, she's 80 years old. I might see her as my age it's because I just take care the way she is for her. I don't do it age or, like, I, I, I take people for what they are. For what they are. Um, um, difficulty managing emotions. I said that sometimes I get really angry because I can't process or express how I'm feeling and um, sensitive um, um, I feel often like I'm a, I'm a different I can, I'm not acting who I am who I really am in situations and then that makes me take a step back and now I'll be like if I don't know how to act I just say I don't know how to act <laughs> But with me close ones, me loved ones, they all get to know me. So me doing this, you're getting to see me. But probably if I was in a room of other people, that would be a different story. But I'm also a fantastic actress, <laughs> if I do say so myself. So I'm also good at putting on an act as well. But also they said autistic people are good, human and funny. And I love to laugh and I love banter and... Um, it's good for the soul and like especially my close friends and family like I had them laughing last night and me they were going you should do stand up um because I was doing a few impressions and I do love comedy and I do love laughing and making people laugh that's probably me who used to it as well a bit of a class clown um but yeah um so that's oh yeah I'm very black or white so I find it really hard if if I'm going to ask you something, I can't deal with it being vague. Like it has to be yes or no. If you say something in between, I'm like, mm, can't, can't, do, can't do this. You're going to have to tell me yes or no. And if someone won't give me a yes or a no answer, oh, I just can't. Just like say yes or no. And when someone leaves you hanging on something, it's the worst thing for me. And it really upsets me. Um, so I like I'm very black or white, um, with everything and actually happy, depressed. <laughs> Where's the grey area? Uh, working on that. Um, yeah. Um, obviously, Rumi makes me dead calm, and I just love having him about. He's always been. I got him initially um years ago, 
I'll tell you the funny story now. Well, I'm going to impress my try to this and so on. So, um, I was single and I was depressed because I was single. Um, and I was like, right, I'm buying a dog. And I always said to my mum, growing up, I want a dog, but she wouldn't get me one because I was allergic. Um, so I was like, mum, right, I'm of an age now, so I'm either, you either let me have a dog for Christmas or I'll buy one myself. And she was like, right, we'll get a dog. I went to I'll buy a Labrador or something massive. I was like, she's like, right, okay. So we went to go and get Romy. And um, he was just dead hyperactive and he reminded me of me. Um, and I picked him and I called him Romeo um, because he's the love of my life. <laughs> and he always has been there for me during every like sad time of my life. And I think I probably would have loved him at first, but now me and his relationship, <laughs> like he's, he was like the owner, do you get me? Like he owned me, but now we're at a good place. Um, and I love him to bits and he's dead calm and I love taking him for walks every day. And he's Caven's best mate as well. And seeing them two together just makes me really happy. Um, so yeah, Rumi. And he went missing one day when he was a little pup. And my dad went, you can get lost. I'm not going outside. Go, Romeo, Romeo, where art thou, Romeo? He said, I'm not having the neighbours. He and we shout that. We were laughing. Um, so we shortened him to Rumi. And that's, that's him. Do you come say hi? Come here. Come here. Come here. Ugh. He's got bad back legs. Let's be careful. You need to go to the groomers, don't you? Yeah. Oh, he did a good scratch. He needs to go to the groomers. They also, <laughs> oh, they also have, um, he's a bit like me, and they have like mad half hours. <laughs> Bichon fevers. And they go for non-allergetic. That's why I've got him as well. He's supposed to not be allergic. I am. But now I think I've just got used to being late to him. Um, yeah, he has mad half hours where he just bombs it around the house, which is a bit sad because he's done in the back of his both cruciate ligaments and he's had operations now and he can't have it again. So, but, oh my God, has anyone seen Marley and me? That phone kills me. My mum was like, <laughs> will we do it? He's never getting put down. And he's like, I'll build him wheels, Ma. And she built him a ramp for outside. Um, but he's doing all right and he's been a lot happier since he's been here and I think because like it's hard isn't it when you've got a dog and like my mum and dad um, and my brother's working and they're here and I've been here at the moment and, and Caven's here and he's just gone so I'm just and I was scratching his ear do to scratch it for you? Uh. Ooh. you okay? right so basically, I just wanted to know if anyone's got coping mechanisms um, for certain things, especially going to new places, because I struggle with that. But also, like I said, I'm a good actress, so I be people that I'm like, right, I'll go into the neuro, whatever they call it, person um, who's okay with new situations and like pretends. Um, I'm on anxiety tablets, which has helped a lot. Um, I'm on quite a bit now, but... I feel like in a really good place and I feel really calm and I think since I've had my diagnosis is that I'm not letting them define me but like because the, there's a few but it, it explains me as a person um, and I understand myself now and I'm giving myself a break to be like do you know what like, as I know, I'm a really good person. I've got the biggest heart and I will love with everything. I say love. This is really weird. When I was a kid, I was quite affectionate. But now as I'm older, I'm not affectionate with anyone. Unless, like, I'm, it's like my mum or my brothers or Caven or my dog. Uh, like, people, I don't know. But I suppose even my dad would have still a bit like, yeah, you're all right, you're, you know what I mean? Like, he's a, like, I pat him, actually. I give him an awkward pat when we hug him, like... Right, but certain people I'm alright with, but I am really loving and really affectionate, and um, I know I'm a really good person. Um, it's just been hard, and it's been hard growing up in the public eye, and it's hard because I can't speak about certain things because of what people have said, and I'll be twisted, and it's not fair. I've for many years had to listen to a lot of lies that were printed about me. And I know that I've just had a lot of trauma 
and um, post-traumatic stress and my little head's been through shock for years um, but I'm getting EDR therapy for that now and help with it and um, and I can't wait like I just feel different now I feel like I've never been this way before in my life and I don't even feel like the old me I feel completely different like everything's just changed about me everything I just love being at home. I love being a mum to Caben. I am just, like, love the little things in life. Like, that's what really matters. Not the materialistic stuff. Not, like, who's got more money and cars and going out to party. I'm like, pff, don't worry, you've done it all. What matters most in life is making memories with the people that you love. Because one day you'll look back and you'll be like, well, what, what did I actually really do with meaningfulness with my life? And I want to look back at mine and be like, yeah. I fought hard and I loved harder. And um, he's biting his paws. Don't bite your paws, mate. Um, <laughs> I'm probably making stress with all this stuff. <laughs> um, but yeah, I just, I just want to live a happy life and with my lovely friends and family and laugh every day and every day be the better per most better person I can be better than who I was yesterday that's my only aim we all make mistakes we all go through different paths in life we all experience hardships we all go through our own pain you know I'm no different to anyone else we all have our own battles going on um but you know as long as you stay strong and fight through it and I touched on one of my videos on Instagram and I was like, obviously, I was really, I was suicidal at one point because I tried to kill myself. And I think that just changes you as a person. It changes your life. And um, I'm really proud of who I am right now. And I'm really proud of what I've overcome. And I'm so lucky to have such a beautiful family who have supported me and my friends through thick and thin always and who knew me for me and um, now here's to a new journey of self-discovery knowing all about myself and to high functioning autism with a lot of other <laughs> mental health problems um, but you know what I'm not perfect who is what is normal there is no normal um, I'm me Right, I'm gonna go and get a new Fanta because I've drunk all that and I have a cuddle with Romeo before we go to bed. Night, guys. Oh, and if you want to leave comments below on coping mechanisms on how to go out in public and things like that, that would be really good. I'm loud noises.